Hi everyone. In the previous lectures, we discussed about the impulse, step and sinusoidal response to a parallel LC circuit in great detail. So here I thought I will just very briefly uh, give a frequency domain intuition for some of the results which may not make, uh, you know, may not sound very intuitive uh, when you just look at it for the first time. So one of the things is that when I gave a pulse input, uh, I said that when you give a pulse input which goes from 0 to T, uh, which, which lasts for t seconds and it's a current pulse we said that the output for this parallel LC circuit was actually a sine wave you know it was actually a sine wave which lasted for one cycle and after that it was zero okay now why is this the case you know and we said for any other pulse width if you give any other pulse width which is not equal to t we would actually get an everlasting sine wave you know that of course the value of the sine wave will change the magnitude of the sine wave will change after this cycle but we will still get a sine wave which will last forever okay which means it's a power signal so i'll just very briefly mention what's an energy signal or a power signal uh, I, you, you may already know that so i'll just quickly refresh it if x of t is an energy signal then we say it the signal has a finite energy so you take the signal take the modulus of it square it integrate it over a range minus t naught by 2 and plus t naught by 2 in the limit t naught tending to infinity. So this is what we call energy of a signal. Now for some signals, especially periodic signals, I will take an example of a complex exponential which is e power j omega naught t. This is a complex exponential. A sinusoid and cosine can be constructed using a complex exponential. Now to compute the energy of this signal, let a be the uh, amplitude of this complex sinusoid then the energy of this signal will be minus t naught by 2 to plus t naught by 2 uh, mod of this is simply a square dt and uh, limit of t naught tending to infinity so this result will actually be a square into t naught in the limit t naught tending to infinity now if you look at this the energy actually tends to infinity so here what you can actually observe is that as I increase my so what is essentially what I am doing is I am taking the signal squaring the signal and then integrating it over an interval t naught. Now the value of this integral over an interval over an interval t naught t naught okay if it diverges I mean it is proportional to t naught then as you increase t naught it is going to blow up to infinity. So in such cases we define what we call as power we just take the ratio of uh, we just compute instead of computing the squared uh, integral we will just compute the average value so we will just we will just divide it by 1 by t naught so you will have the signal we will just square the signal uh, in fact it is modulus square and in the limit t naught tending to infinity now this result will converge to a finite value if if the energy is a linear function of t meaning as I increase the time window of computation uh, for the energy, the, the energy should also increase linearly with T naught. For such signals, we will have a finite power. So for examples, I, I can take several examples, the step input. For example, if a step input which goes from 0 to 1 or 0 to A, uh, if I just square this and then integrate it over T naught seconds, the area is going to be A naught, I mean uh, A square T naught. So as I increase T naught, the energy is also increasing. So if I take the ratio, if I divide it by 1 by t naught, I get power. So this is a finite power signal. So for a power signal, energy will be infinity, but power will be finite. Okay. Uh, in the limit t naught tending to infinity, energy goes to infinity here. Energy will be infinity, but power will be finite. And for power to be finite, you need to have your energy to be proportional to t naught. Only then the power will be finite. So for example complex exponentials also obey the same condition for complex exponentials as well we saw that the energy was proportional to a square t naught we just took this example uh, if i try to compute a complex exponential uh, substitute in this equation you will get the same result a square t naught okay so for even for complex exponentials in fact for sinusoids and uh, for sinusoids we will actually get energy proportional to t naught so all those signals are power signals so power signals uh, you typically will have uh, because their uh, they, because their energy is I mean energy is infinity uh, they'll actually have some 
uh, you know point where in the Fourier transform they'll go to infinity. So for example, a step input, the Fourier transform is one by j omega uh, plus pi delta of omega. Okay, so this result again uh, can be very easily shown that so at origin, if you if I plot the magnitude of the step uh, step input. For a transform of the step input, it's going to look like this. It's going to roll off as 1 by omega on either sides and it's going to blow up to infinity. This just shows that at DC, the value, I mean, this the, I'm just multiplying, this is for unit step, so you have to multiply it by A. At DC, the value, the Fourier transform value is infinity. So that's what this tells us. Okay. And similarly for sinusoids, we'll have impulses at the frequency of, of the sinusoid we will be having impulses and again we know that the va value of the impulse is uh, infinity, the amplitude of the impulse is infinity but the area under the impulse it will integrate out to be a finite value, they are sinusoids so they can exist only at single frequencies. Okay. Now for a, a parallel LC circuit, we already plotted the frequency response of a parallel LC circuit, we said that around f omega naught which is 1 by root LC, it is going to it's going to blow up to infinity at omega naught and it's going to roll off as you know as 1 by omega for higher frequencies okay so this is the response we get so now what we did was that in the previous example we just took a pulse of width 0 to t and an amplitude i naught now the Fourier transform of this pulse is a sync function I'm just plotting the magnitude the sync function will go to 0 at 1 by t. Multiples of every multiple of 1 by t, it's a sync function. Uh, it's going to go to 0 at multiples of 1 by t. Therefore, it doesn't really have any energy at 1 by t. So, when I'm going to multiply this with the, uh, I'm, when I'm just going to, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, multiplying uh, the input signal with the transfer function will give you the output function, output signals for a transform. That's not really good because it's 0 here. There is no energy present at 1 by t you are not going to get a sinusoid. For you to get a sinusoid, you should actually, the product should be infinity at that point, right? A sinusoid is a power signal, so it should blow up at that frequency. But since it is zero, I can say that a very small number, I'm multiplying it by a very large number, I'm going to get a very a finite value. But if I feed any pulse of width not equal to 1 by t, zero, to, I'm going to call it some t dash, which is not equal to 1 by t, the zeros of this sync function will not be at 1 by t, it will be slightly away from 1 by t. Now because the zeros will be at slightly away from 1 by t, at 1 by t that is at f naught or omega naught, there will be some finite energy here, so which I am going to multiply it with, with the transfer function which will be infinity here. So at this frequency alone, the output for a transform will blow up to infinity. So therefore, you will have a sine wave output. Okay, blowing up to infinity just uh, it, it's a characteristic of a power signal. Uh, at that frequency, the output should actually blow up to infinity. Then you know that you know you are going to have some sinusoidal output. Okay, if, if it's going to blow up at a single frequency, you will have a sinusoidal output. Okay, so that's one way of seeing. So by that you can see that zero to t actually has a zero at uh, the resonant frequency itself. So there is no energy there, so which is why you don't see a everlasting sinusoid when you feed uh, a pulse signal. The other doubt that you should get here uh, is when you feed a sinusoid. So we fed a sinusoid of value i naught sin omega naught t. In the previous lecture, we we actually you know uh, fed a sinusoid which is actually i naught sin omega naught t u of t. So you should actually logically you would think that sin omega naught t or any sinusoid is going to have two impulses at f naught at, at f naught and we actually fed a sinusoid which was omega x where omega x was not equal to omega naught. If you look at this there is no energy at omega naught I mean this is omega x and this is minus omega x there is no energy at omega naught and how did if you if you look at the if you remember the expression you can go through the previous lecture and see that the response for this sinusoid was actually some constant times cos of omega x t minus cos of omega naught t. There was also an omega naught present on the output. Okay, There was both omega x and omega naught and also interestingly the amplitudes of both these sinusoids were the same. Okay, So the, the answer lies in the fact that it is actually i naught sin omega t into u of t. 
it's not just sin omega t sin omega x t so the Fourier transform of sin omega x will be like this and the Fourier transform of u of x will be uh, u of t will be uh, you know 1 by j omega centered at origin so in time domain if you multiply in frequency domain you will be convolving it so therefore you will actually have a function which goes like this this is omega x centered around omega x you know this will get translated to omega x and minus omega x so we'll actually have a function like this now the resonant frequency is somewhere here i mean i'm assuming here it's greater than this omega x so it's going to be somewhere here now if you look at it the signal has a finite energy at the resonant frequency so when i'm going to multiply it with an infinite value i'm going to get an infinite value at this resonant frequency and similarly at this point at this point here this is also has the, I mean the input signal also has an infinite value so when I multiply it by a finite uh, gain at this point I'm again going to get an infinite value at omega x as well okay so I'll just give a simple intuition so if assuming these two functions are similar to each other you know the roll off of this and this functions are nearly similar to each other then the distance from omega x to omega naught this would have decayed by the same amount that this function here would have decayed you know this would also have decayed by the same amount so the product i can say that you know is nearly going to be the same okay at this frequency it's just the product of the two functions which is now which is the Fourier transform of the output okay so this is your input signal and this is the transfer function of the system all i'm saying is if i start start at omega x and move towards omega naught the decay in amplitude will be same as if i start from omega naught and move towards omega x here okay so that's why uh, you are going to get sinusoids of same magnitude amplitude will be same for both the sinusoids the output is going to contain sinusoids because at this frequency both at omega naught and omega x the transfer function i mean the the Fourier transform of the output is blowing up to infinity so you are, you are supposed to i mean you are going to have uh, some kind of a sinusoid at the output okay but uh, here we also see we can also intuit it this is just a very simple intuition intuitive way of looking at it it can be the same the amplitudes will also be same and that result again makes sense okay uh, for a sinusoid on the other hand if i give a frequency at omega naught itself to begin with the sinusoid has an infinite free i mean gain i mean value at omega naught okay on top of which i'm again multiplying it with a gain of infinity so this is i'm just explaining for a sinusoid uh, of frequency omega naught so therefore when i multiply this input sinusoid with a gain of infinity i'm going to get an infinite amplitude sine wave which is what we saw in the previous example in the previous lecture that the amplitude was t is proportional to t so as time increases the amplitude was also increasing okay uh, so that's all uh, for today's i mean i just wanted to just have a, a it's, it's more of a wind up lecture for the previous just to give some provide some intuition which i felt i missed in the previous lectures so if the signal has zero energy or you know the Fourier transform is literally zero at that given frequency then you will not have an everlasting sine wave at the output okay but if the Fourier transform is non-zero the input Fourier transform is non-zero at the resonant frequency f naught or omega naught then you are definitely for a purely if you feed there is an input to a lossless LC circuit you are definitely going to have a sinusoid as an output okay because you are going to multiply this with an infinite gain so for the Fourier transform is going to be infinity at omega naught since it is infinity you are going to have a power signal at the output okay and I said power it's, it's one of the characteristics of power signals is that it's going to blow up at least to at infinity at, at, at one of the frequencies okay so in frequency domain in Fourier transform you can actually see that it's going to infinity at well, at least one of the frequencies at, at least one frequency point okay so uh, this is a very brief uh, intuition behind why why did we get those outputs so why for example when we fed a pulse input we suddenly saw the there was no sinusoid just decayed down of course we gave an intuition in terms of energy and loss and energy gain but this is actually looking at it from frequency domain point of view uh, we can actually give an intuition using frequency domain as well so that's the purpose of this uh, very small lecture so i'll uh, stop at this point